Hey guys, I hope that you guys are doing amazing wherever you are in the world. My name is Boom Shaka. If you guys are on my channel, you probably know that. And I mostly speak about INFJ stuff on this channel. I'm so excited to speak to you guys about my topic for today, which is why INFJs kind of seem androgynous sometimes. Now, if you don't know what the androgynous means, just stick with me. I'll explain it to you, okay? Uh, by the way, it is raining behind me in the jungle. So if you guys hear raindrops or whatever, just ignore it. Just rain, it's thunderstorms, it's lightning, whatever it might be, right? So I've actually noticed this about myself um, when I walk through the world. I am a very feminine person. Obviously, I'm, uh, I am, even if I'm a female or a male, whatever it might be on the inside, I am very feminine on the outside. You know, I have long hair. I behave very feminine as well. No matter how much I dress as a tom tomboy, and for the longest time, when I was going through puberty and I hated the fact that I had boobs, I hated the fact that I was a girl and everyone was staring at me all the time, I hated the fact that I was going through all those changes, I dress up like a man all the time. I dress up as a boy all the time. You know, I'd wear sneakers, I'd wear only pants, there were no skirts in my wardrobe. I hated skirts with a passion. Uh, I did not want any attention on me because I didn't want people to know I was a girl, so I'd dress as a boy. Now, my hair was still long because I would not want to cut it. I still liked being a girl. I just didn't like the attention I got as a you know female going through puberty, I find that all of a sudden you realize all of these people are looking at you. What the hell? All of these men are looking at you in that manner. And you're like, mm, I don't like it, right? But no matter how much, even now I dress up as a man. You know, I try, because uh, sometimes I'm traveling in an Asian country and uh, you know how it is when you're traveling in an Asian country by yourself. I always travel by myself. So again, men are looking at me or they're, you know, catcalling, doing all that stuff. So I always try to wear outfits that are not revealing, outfits that are covering me up completely, and also, you know, long pants, uh, long shirts, uh, long sleeve shirts, things like that. So I'm covered up, I kind of look like a man, I'm wearing long, loose clothes, you can't see my boobs, you can't see my bum, you can't see anything, right? So that's how I like to dress, but even though, and I've noticed this about myself, even though I try to be as manly as possible, as, as masculine as possible, so that I don't attract attention, I still get a lot of people telling me how feminine I am uh, in a lot of ways. I'm very soft, I'm very, um, I just a lot of feminine characteristic, right? Which is really surprising to me because I myself think of myself as a tomboy. I think of myself as mostly masculine, not very feminine at all, right? Um, I know I've come across right now, obviously you probably are looking at me as well and you're like, what, the, what are you talking about? You're so feminine. But no, in my heart, in my head, in my heart, in my body, in my mind, I feel of my, I think of myself as more masculine than feminine. I, I behave like that as well, you know. I have, it's really easy for me to make male friends. Actually, all of my really good friends are always usually male. And it's really easy for me to kind of meld in with them. But with female group of friends, I have a really hard time. I have very few female friends. And if I do have them, it's because they sought me out, not because I sought them out. You know, it's really hard for me to ingratiate myself into a group of female friends or into a group of female females because it's just I, I just don't feel like I get along with them. I don't know what to talk to them about. I don't wear makeup. I don't know what to say to them, right? I don't have crushes. Uh, I just don't know what to talk to them about, right? Uh, but with men, I can talk to them very easily because they think like me. I, I think in my head they think like me. They're very masculine. I'm very masculine. Um, so we have great conversations. I also have had jobs in the past. Um, I've always had jobs in the past where which were predominantly male because I thought of myself as a male mostly, right? And so a lot of those people, a lot of the jobs I have are very techie, so a lot of males. Um, they were also like peace officers or officer, uh, officer of, the, of the court, um, customs inspectors, things like that, where they were only mostly male. And I was one of them. Actually, I was only in my team. I was only female. And, but I was very comfortable because men are easy to hang out with because I know how they think because I feel, I think that I think like them. Right? Now... This is something that you guys have messaged me several times about is the fact that, you know, a lot of you, even if whatever your gender might be, you know, your physical gender, and again, that doesn't really matter nowadays that much, I understand, but I'm, I'm speaking in terms of that because it's easier that way. So no matter what your gender, I am female, but a lot of times an INA, a female INFJ will behave more masculine and a male INFJ will behave more feminine. Now, these are just typical characteristics I'm talking about. Like, I'm not saying that masculine people always have to be a certain way or feminine people always have to be a certain way, but just what society dictates it to be, right? So in a feminine characteristic, that's why male energies sometimes have a very hard time with, you know, being that 
macho guy in, in the society that everyone wants them to be. I've done a video on this before as well. You guys have probably seen it, where I speak about how male INFJs are, I think I have, they have a much harder time in this world than female INFJs, although we already do have a very hard time, but because they have this kind of, this image that they have to portray to the world, but because INFJs are androgynous, that is, they kind of don't display any one characteristic. They don't, they're not either feminine or masculine. They're kind of both. And so that's why female INFJs seem very masculine at times, and male INFJs seem very feminine at times because we're androgynous, right? And so we come across as that. And it's very easy for male INFJs to have a lot of female friends, but very few male friends because they just can't, you know, they can't be that man, like, you know, talking about soccer or football or whatever men do, right? Um, and the same thing with female. I have a really hard time having female friends because I don't talk about makeup. I have no, I mean, I'm obviously being very fascistic right now. I'm saying things that are, that are very standard or very cliche, but I'm just saying these because I want you guys to realize that this is, these are the cliches that we're dealing with in society. I'm not making these cliches up. They're in society. They're the stereotypes that we deal with every single day. And so if we don't behave in that manner, if I come across as too masculine, uh, and I do because I'm very techy, I'm very geeky, a lot of times men will come up to me and ask me technical questions and they'll ask me to fix something for them technical. In my office, I'm the only technical person. I'm the female. All the guys, and I'm, I work with all guys, um, they have no idea what they're talking about. I'm the geek. They come to me with questions about Bitcoins. And then they come to me with questions about how to set up an iPhone or how to set up Google Docs or, I mean, like, silly questions like that. But, like, I am the techie person in the office, right? I'm the geek. And so that, and that's the way I kind of portray myself in the world, not only because I, you know, I'm trying to play a role, but that's who I am. That's always who I've been. might also be because my dad um, always made sure that he, um, he always wanted to make sure that I was well-educated in maths and sciences because he knew that was the way I was going to get ahead in the world. And also he wanted me to go into business and so he always kind of, he didn't think of me as a female. He just thought of me as a child that he wanted to put forth into the world, into technical aspects, into math. I, was, I love math. I'm really good at it. I'm actually, in every class in math or calculus, I was always first. There were a lot of guys in the class who would always be surprised. And even my professor would look at me like, you're, you're, he would look at me. He'd, he'd take my sheet and be like, okay, check out that one. You got, you know, 95 or 98, wherever out of 100 and he'd look up and see me and he expected a guy and he'd see me and look at me and he's like, but you're a brown girl. <laughs> I always remember that look on his face. I think to myself, what were you expecting exactly? Uh, but he did not expect that and that's always been the case with me because I portray characteristics of more masculine char characteristics than fem feminine, right? It's kind of like a cliche in the world that women don't like math. I, it's a very stupid cliche because it's, it's it kind of perpetuates that myth and and more and more girls don't like want to do math because they think well i'm not going to be good at it anyways because girls are not good at math false it's absolutely false obviously i'm amazing at math i'm really good at it. i'll beat anyone in math any day i'm really good at technical skills as well and that's another field that females are not supposed to be good at of course that's again a myth a false 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 thing but these are the cliches that the, the universe, the society kind of propagates for us, right? And so these are the cliches that we kind of fall into. But because female INFJs are androgynous, as are male INFJs, we don't actually fit in with the cliches. We don't actually fit in with the stereotypes. And so we always end up being that person where, you know, you're the female techie in the group, or you're the female, you know, um, Star Wars geek in the group, or Star Trekkie, Trekkie in the group. Or things like that. Or if you're a male energy, you're the male energy who knows everything about fashion or who knows everything about how, um, which, what, did, what are the Kardashians doing or something like that. I don't know. I don't know what the feminine things are, but you know what I'm saying. I hope you know what I'm saying, right? So we're very androgynous. We don't actually play a role in one aspect or another. We kind of have both melded into each other. So as you see me and I walk through the world, I'm very feminine. I dress really feminine right now as well. I, I love wearing dresses. I love wearing pretty floral stuff. So I dress very feminine. So when you look around me, when I'm walking through the world, you see me and you'll see, oh, this is a very feminine girl. But as soon as you speak to me, you realize, you know, I am not very feminine in a lot of ways. I have, I, the way I speak, I, I'm very techy, uh, as I said, and I love talking about technical things. I love talking about quantum physics and math and calculus. I love doing all that stuff. I'm always taking courses on it. 
Um, I also love learning about all of the different technical things that are going on in the world. Technology in general fascinates me. So in that matter, that's how we're andro androgynous, right? And the same thing, as I said, applies to male energies. So I'm not a male energy, so I can't give you examples of it, but I hope that you guys kind of get a sense of what I'm trying to tell you. The reason I'm kind of mentioning this, the reason I really want to do this video is because there is this myth in this world that is perpetuated over and over again that we have to play a certain role. And if we don't play that role, that we're not going to be successful on this planet, right? So I never play that role. I was, I've was i never played the feminine role. I, I can't do it. It's not possible for me. I'm always fighting with people for it. I fought with my dad since I was a little child because I did not want to be a girl. I did not like being a girl in, in that sense where, you know, you go and play with dolls. I never played with dolls. I didn't have Barbies when I was younger. Um, you know, you go and help mom cook in the kitchen. I hated it. I don't want to cook in the kitchen. I want to go play outside. You know, I want to go around, hang out with my guy friends and roam around the city and be a rebel and make shit happen, you know, things like that. So I got into trouble a lot because I did not want to be that typical girl. Even right now, I don't want to be a girl. I don't want to get married and have kids. I don't want kids, you know. So in a lot of ways, I would always have to fight against the stereotype. Fight, 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 fight all the time. Even now, I'm 34, I'm living on my own, I'm still freaking fighting for my rights and fighting for my, to, to be who I want to be. I'm not saying necessarily that I'm fighting against it because I just don't want to be female. I love being female, I love being a girl, but it doesn't mean that just because I'm a girl that I have to behave in a certain way. No, I can be a girl and still love um, you know, technical stuff. I can be a girl and still love calculus. I can be a girl and love to dress up and wear floral dresses. And I, I can still be a girl and love to talk about Bitcoins. You know what I'm saying? So I hate this freaking thing in the universe, in the society right now, where you're like, okay, there, this is the mold that you have to fit into this box, this tiny little box. And if you don't fit into this box, then you're weird. You're insane. You're crazy. You, you need to go to an institution or, or you're, you're never going to be successful or people look down upon you or they make fun of you or all that shit. They bully you, basically, right? They bully you. They brainwash you into kind of fitting into that mold. And if you don't fit that mold, then you're ostracized, you're kind of kicked out of society, right? That's the reason I'm doing this video. Again, as you can see, I get very adamant and very uh, animated about this topic because it really irks me because I get this thing happening to me over and over again even now. Even now people ask me, when are you going to get married? And I'm thinking to myself, are you an idiot? I'm 34, I haven't gotten married yet. You think I'm going to get married now? I mean, oh, anyways. So this is the reason I wanted to do this video. I want you guys to realize, no, you don't have to play that freaking role. If you don't want to fit into the mold, if you don't want to fit into that box, just don't. Just And do not believe the lies that they tell you that you're not going to be successful if you don't fit into that box. Because I am living proof that you can still be a success even if you don't fit into a box. And I, there's a billion people on this planet, well, millions of people on this planet who have not fit into a box. And they are amazing successes. So do not worry about that. Just do your shit. Do your thing. Do whatever the hell you want to do. If you want to dress up in in, uh, in a floral dress, even if you're a male, do it. Who cares what the hell everyone says, right? Do whatever the hell you want to do. If you want to dress up in a in a camo uh, military thing as a female, do it. You know, I don't really give a rat's ass. As long as you're doing what matters to you, as long as you're behaving in a way that really truly matters to you, it doesn't really matter what everyone else thinks. Right? I hope. All right, I hope this makes sense to you guys. This has been an extremely long video. Uh, I kind of got carried away a bit, but that's okay. I hope it makes sense to you guys. If you guys have any questions at all, please let me know anytime. I'm here to answer your questions. My messages, my email and all the contact information is in the description below, so you can get it there. And I shall see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.